Hello ladies and gents, in this video we will talk about pagination and the count mode in UI5 when we are working with OData version 2. In the previous section we had already implemented pagination for our list by setting the growing property to true for our list. And the default threshold was 20 but since we don't have 20 products coming from our OData here, let's reduce that to 5 for example and save. And if we check our app, we can see that the pagination still works. And if we click on more, we get more products. Now let's refresh our app. And in our developer console in the network tab, let's filter for all data and see what effect that has on the all data calls. If we check our product call now, we can see that there are two URL parameters that are being passed. First one is $skip and the second one is $top. Skip one specifies how many records will be skipped and since this is the first request, we don't want to skip anything. So we start from the top and $top specifies how many records will be retrieved. And since we set the threshold to five here, we always get five records per request. And if I click on more here, there will be another request. And this time we will skip the first five that we retrieved in the previous request. And then we will fetch the next five product. But you can see that the skip is five as we thought, but top is four instead of five. That's because we have nine products in total and UI5 is smart enough to know that doesn't have to send five here. But if we copy this request and paste it in a new tab in our browser, we can also get the same results. And we can add one more URL parameter here, which is called dollar format and set it to JSON. So it looks better for us we can see the four products being returned. And if we make this top to five, we will still get the same exact results. If we set the growing threshold to a four, for example, we will get all the records four by four. So first we get four, we click on more, we get four more and there is one left and we get it from here. And you see for the first one, we skip none and get the four, we skip four and get the next four, and we get the latest one. It is also possible to get the number of records we get back from the OData service using the count URL parameter. So if we again check our logs, in the network tab we can see before sending a products request here, we see a count request. And if we check the URL, it's just the entity set product slash dollar count. So this is the URL parameter we use to fetch the count. And if we check the response, we can see the total number of records that are returned from all data. Even if we select the first four or n records, first we get this total count of the list. And we can actually manipulate this behavior via the default count mode property of our model settings. So let's go to our manifest.json and find our default data model here. And we will add another attribute here named default count mode. And the default value for that is request, which we have just seen how it works. And another one we can use is the inline mode. And with the inline mode, count is retrieved along with the data requests if no count has been determined yet. Let's see what that means. If we go back, now we no longer see a separate count request. But if we check our products request here, in the response, we get our products results and then we get another one named count. But if we send one more request for the next four records, then we no longer get this count. And another one we can use here is inline repeat. 
and as you can guess this is very similar to the inline so it will be returned along with the response but it will be returned for every request so for the first one we have it if we get the next four we still have it and with all the requests we will get a count here and the last one is none which will not return any count here let's set it back to the default one so request for now and using this let's add the number of records to our list header here so instead of saying products let's add the count next to it as well for that we can use the update finished event of our list but first let's assign an ID to our title here our list title is here because we will need to update this from our controller so we have to be able to access this let's give it an ID and say ID list title for example and let's also add our event to our list let's say here the event name is update finished and let's name our handler on product loaded let's save and copy this go to our controller and somewhere here for example we are going to use the event object and let's construct our new title here so we say const as title equals first we need to get the default value of our title which is here let's check the list header so we will get it from our resource bundle we can say this that get owner component which will return our component instance and then we can say get model so we can access the i18n model which has a method named get resource bundle this should be a lowercase u and lastly we say get text and the text key is list header and with this update finished event we have access to an event parameter named total which will include the total count number that we have seen in the developers console so our new title will be let's use string interpolation here we will use first the default title So we use dollar and curly braces and inside as title and we give it a space and between parentheses we can say again dollar and curly braces or event dot get parameter and the name of the parameter is total and we simply set this to our title we gave it an id as id list title so here we say this dot get view by id our title id and then we say set text and the text we would like to set is this one right here let's now check next to our title we can see we have nine products in total which we can also confirm with this more section here and we can see the other ones as well that would be all for this video and hope to see you in the next one where we will talk about sorting and filtering with OData version 2